this is part two of the huge episode we were doing with Preston from the Beer Chase. Who's sitting what here? up? He's here joining us, and we were getting ready for the next episode, which would be, I would assume, episode 11. So it's huge. That won't make sense over here. That's a thing in Tampa. Sorry. Yeah. So this is part This is part two. We were going to get into some cool beer tastings. We were going to taste some home brews that we did, me and Preston did. So we were going to yes, get into sir. that right now. Let's do it. All right. We are back from our break. What is up? We we're back. We're, this is, oh, dude, I'm so fucking excited it's right time, now. It's time, my friend. It's time. It's time. It, it's time. Remember, so. Jeff, I came uh, about a month and a half, about two months ago. Well, Beginning about, of December. I came back and I said I brewed beer with Preston. Yeah. Well. This is it? This is this is his batch. This my is batch is coming up next. Ah. But this is, this is the beer that we brewed. I can't wait we to did, give you yeah. a scathing review. Yeah. It's so, a little, well, it's a little misleading. You, so, want, you want to go into it? Yeah. So every year, you know, we're, we're not every year. This is the third year running that the Beer Chasers have been invited to uh, attend the Deland Craft Beer Festival. As part of the festival, we are usually with the homebrew crew, uh, a little homebrewer corner there where all the homebrew clubs are and Beer Chasers. And we give out some of our homebrews, get to mingle, kind of get to pass out some business cards and, you know, walk yep. the festival. So... Uh, again, as part of that, we have to provide some beer. So this year, you know, I, I asked Mike, you know, I said, hey, do you want to kind of go in on this this year? Would you like to kind of be partners with this and kind of help me brew a beer? And, you know, Mike Mike thought long and hard, and I think we went back and forth a couple of times with some certain styles, you know. Yeah. And I think we finally settled on uh, an American wheat. Correct. Um, and I'd recently just picked up a new brew setup, so I was able to brew more than five gallons at a time. I said, look, let's brew like eight gallons. We'll split it two different ways. You do a version, and I'll do a version. So the base beer is the same. Oh, right? okay. So you brewed it, we and then the you, same grain. did we you the treat same. it, or did you then? We, we brewed the same base. So it's the so, American yeah. with the same grains and everything. I basically okay. brewed eight gallons of uh, of American wheat that used. So we collected you know, 10 or 11 gallons worth of wort based off of uh, it's two row, like 50% two row, 50% wheat, and a small amount of Cara Munich just to give it like a little bit of sweetness. So once we collected that wort, we then did two separate boils. So okay. we, we hopped it differently cool. both times at two different boils, and we both had different fruit additions that we did in secondary. Okay. And the hops we used are relatively new, correct? Some of them are really new, yeah. Um, so for my version, we hopped it with Jarillo. So Jarillo, not as new, but it is a kind of banana pear, also like a slight spiciness to it. So both have like a spiciness that's a, character that's to it. That's a weird hop profile. And that's we also different. We, and we both use a Zaka, which is a uh, very tropically mango-y yeah. kind of uh, big popping kind of uh, hop. So for my fruit edition, I did star fruit. So it's Ooh, star fruit with Jarillo and a Zaka. So let's go ahead. And what hop did I use? You use Peco. Peco. Or Pico. Okay. I used Pico. to. I actually grew up and with Zaka. two star fruit trees in my backyard. So star fruit's like a nostalgia fruit for me. Okay. That's awesome. That's so good. fresh off the tree, man. Yeah. Just go out and eat. And which I found out later in life is apparently bad. It's like poisonous if you just eat it right off the tree. Oh, well, yeah, I ate, I grew up like a, a, eating them like crazy. So. Animal. Uh, <laughs> it explains a lot. Yeah, that's how I got freckles. I think. <laughs> so if I could get a moment of silence, because as a home brewer, when you pop a beer for the first time, there's always this crazy moment of truth that you hope that God it carbonated. And I have this is my first popping. All right. So we're gonna try. Everybody, it. shut up. Sound of success. So we have some carbs. Awesome. So I'm so pumped. All right. I'm like retardedly excited right now. <laughs> like, it's, and and this, they had the exact way you want it to kind of carbonate. Is, this is Preston's beer, but like oh, I poured a little heavy. I'm sorry, Goose. Oh, it's okay. Here, oh, you're fine. I'll, I'll dump. I'll dump a little. Here, go ahead. Now this is Preston's beer. This is his star fruit American wheat. But my version, go. first beer I've ever brewed. First beer, so I'm fucking stoked, son. I'm definitely taking a full pour. Sorry. It's all right. Well, you, uh, yours looks hazy. Yeah, I get the bottom of it. So generally, because it's home brewed, it's naturally carbonated with sugar. Yeah. So you're gonna get some of that sediment in the bottom. So I got the, love, the I got the yeast poop. So, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, fellas, go through the rating. What's the so color, Jeff? Traditional, spot on. Traditional American, cloudy, yeah. spot on. Yep. So appearance, I would say, you know, you got white lining around the glass, so there's head retention. So so far, everything's looking perfect. Smells right. Smells right. So. Oh yeah, it's. Oh, dude, I'm so excited. <laughs> What do you think of Goose? Because I'm going to be, so, I'm gonna be <laughs> so biased right now. Cause I'm a lot of fruit notes. Perfect time. Sure. Oh, yeah. It's right of, up the bat. It I can't yeah. do that. You with my that. hands smell like bleach. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like trying to keep my hands out of it. <laughs> you def I mean, I've never had star fruit to my knowledge. So I don't know what to oh compare it to. Oh, my God. But I can so definitely it's smell it. It's, like, it's, it's really like a, It's fruity. like a pear and an it's apple. Like a fruit. Yeah, yeah, it's very like acidic, like a citrus. But it's, oh, you can definitely smell fruit. It's very pear, apple-y. 
with kind of a tropical hint to it. Now, you made one last year, right? Yeah, or like a, I've done Starfruit a couple times. Maybe not for the land, times. but, you know, just... I've used Starfruit uh, a couple times. And it, it kind of fell flat, if this I remember. This is the most I've ever used. This is five pounds of it, which is like $18 worth of Starfruit yeah. in here. Um, I didn't know they were expensive. I would have been selling those. They're like when I was three, a kid. three for five bucks, basically. I would have so, for sure been selling them off my tree. Let's, if I knew let's that. see if Preston hits another home run with one of his home All right, brews. Guys, cheers, cheers, fellas. fellas. To Deland Craft Beer Festival. Deland. And Marie and everybody. So good. You can clearly taste the star fruit. Yeah. So refreshing. So that Drillo, yeah. do you get the spiciness? A little bit of yeah. that kind yeah. of spice yeah. character? Yeah. Wow. This is really so good, this dude. Is, Congratulations. Yeah this, is, yeah, this is good. Yeah, that is unbelievably refreshing. Really, I mean, American wheat, it's going to be light, but it's got body. and It's, it's super so, like. Yeah, it's 5.4%. Okay. Um, uh, it's about average. Yeah. It, it's beefy there. Towards the tail end of what's acceptable for style, but I always go to the edge. Why? Yeah, fuck it. I mean, unless you're making a session IPA, I'm happy. It, I mean, it is the, the finish is through. so nice because yeah. it, it doesn't. It's, it's, so the body, the body disappears as it should in a in a right. light wheat, but right. the flavor just lingers a little bit, and it's light. It's not overpowering. It's not syrupy, but it's just there. I can't believe it, it does have that kind of weird spiciness to it, yeah, and that's that hop. Yeah, the hops really worked with this, and I know when you when you came to me to talk about brewing a beer, I wanted something light and refreshing. That was the first thing that came out of my mouth. I want something light and refreshing. And we were actually, last year, dude. We were dying out there. <laughs> dude, we were it was like your eighty-eight ass off. degrees. It was and we're the only schmucks out there without a tent. Yeah, because the year before, I, I'd been inside the warehouse. You know, per, Persimmon Hollow, yeah. right next to it. There's that warehouse. Yep. Well, the year before I went, both warehouses were open, so it was just in the warehouses. Well, Persimmon Hollow had bought that warehouse, so they kicked. Everybody out of the one warehouse. So me and Mike are out I'll there. I'll post a picture of us fucking literally sweating. Dying. Well, it's funny It's funny tent. you said that because when we got to the end, I think I already shared this story. When it got to the end of the Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day, everybody was stouted out. Yeah. And everybody's begging for sessionable, light, crisp beers because it's like, <laughs> we're like, we're like, dude, give me what, I don't care what it is. Just give me like a sour. Give me a, a something light because when you have... And I'm sure it's the same way. Every, everybody's going to have a big stout, big the, yeah. you know, big double IPAs, all yeah. this high ABV, high gravity, all this. And and you're gonna, this is going to be like, oh my god, I can't wait to drink this beer. Right. <laughs> Cause I'm I'm already drunk. I need something light. And this that's is why be I it. want it. And we were kind of time restricted, so we need something that we could turn over quick. Yeah. God, this is the nose well, on this. So is we incredible. we had the opportunity because you know me, I'm I'm Mr. Planny. I'm already yeah. I'm already thinking about the beer I'm doing next year and when yeah. I've got to brew it. And my next six brews are scheduled out based on how long they're going to take. So we we talked about doing like an orange cream sickle. We did that was our first idea. You know, like that. we were going to do like an orange cream sickle. But then time wouldn't allow that, so we needed something quick. And I was like, "Dude, it was hot as shit last year. Like we yeah. were sweating, sunburnt. Let's do something nice and refreshing." And I was, "Why don't we do like a Blue Moon this clone, like nice an American Wheat?" Thanks, man. Yeah. So he's so, like, "Oh, it's about it's the three week turnover, and three weeks will be you know done and ready. So in about a month, this it's five five weeks, five weeks total time." This doesn't have any of that awkward kind of like over yeasted taste. You know, what I, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Den that, Denny's like, favorite fifty is is the yeast I yeah. use, which is supposed to be like this very universally uh, good yeast that goes across different styles. It's good yeah. for styles. It's good for ales. Okay. Because, yeah, because it has none of that, like, bready yeah. kind of finish. It, it's just, it's balanced. Oh, but yeah. Light, balanced, and refreshing. Super crisp, where it could almost pass off as as a, a mid-level um, in body, like a mid-level lager. Yeah. But it, it's not. It's a wheat, and it tastes... It, the nose is perfect. The, the hop, finish the hop is perfect. Really, yeah, really came through. Yeah, which I'm. I'm, I'm I thought super it would. Happy for. I, I, I thought about star fruit. I mean, wanting to use Jarillo. Well that was great. I thought about using Jarillo in a Hefe, just because it's supposed to be kind of banana. I don't know if that spice would work so well in a German Hefe, but um, I always wanted to use it. And we, excuse me. You talk about wanting to do American wheat, and I'm like, dude, I'll do star fruit. And I'll do that. So let me let me out. ask this. So did we? Did you? Sorry. Do you think we nailed the American wheat part? Yeah. 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 Oh, so, yeah. like, that was actually just what I was going to say. So, as you said earlier when you were talking about breweries, and you said some of these breweries are putting out two 2.5s and they're doing it professionally. And, and my question actually was going to be to you do you think that getting an experienced brewer on a professional level when you're opening a brewery is important? Or do you think that getting a quality home brewer and translating it into a professional brew house 
is as successful because at some point you need to make that changeover. And I think what most people do when they're putting out twos and 2.5s is they were a hobbyist yeah. who got a big system and got somebody to back them because they made a beer or two that were great. Right. And, and then they end up in the professional system and it doesn't translate. Yeah. And, they're, and they, instead of perfecting the craft, they start putting out and just let's get open, let's get revenue, and then we'll work on it. And that's why I have so many breweries start bad and you hear, I hear they're getting better. And yeah. it's like, this this right here, you if this were out, in a can. You shouldn't be opening up the brewery unless you're ready to go. So like, Thank you. Like I always say, like I always say when we try, especially home brews, but any beer, imagine that you went to the bar, ordered exactly what it was described as, opened the can and drank it. Would you be happy or not? And this right here, if this were in distribution and I was getting a star fruit American wheat, I would love this beer. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So like that's a, that's please, a home run. To that's me. why I always tell anybody like you will. I promise you, as a brewer, I want to get better. If something's off on it, it's it's not carbonated right. It's just I want to know so I can fix it the next time. It doesn't do me any good for you to blow smoke up my ass. Right. So I will promise you on any beers you ever drink of mine, be one hundred percent honest. If it tastes like dog shit, be like yo. That was way off. There was something bitter or burnt in there. It just didn't work well. Like I, well, the, thanks I mean, for giving it to me, but you know I didn't like it. Like, dude, I would take that and I would love that kind of feedback. And, and I feel like, just from talking to you, I feel like you're gonna know that in your own beer because you're gonna be you're gonna be not like I brewed it, so it's my baby. Like, yeah. I feel like you're gonna be your worst critic. And this, I mean, you know, this is a home run. I think it's good. Yeah. I don't know what I would rate it. It's it's very subjective. It's hard. Well, you're hard on yourself. So I, I think we we nailed the American wheat part right. Absolutely. Do, do you think the hops work well with this? Is it not yes. over hops? Oh yeah. I think no, I think the Jarillo is perfect. I would want more exact Azaka. Yeah. Just a little bit more. You 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 get it when you're looking for it. Like I get a lot of the orange zest right when you like kind of like swallow it down. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe a little bit more of the Azaka would okay. be would make it better. But this is still a fucking awesome beer, man. Yeah. I'm so, I mean, I'm I think, so happy I with think it. And, and then the fruit works as well. So yeah. Those, those oh yeah. Questions. Did we I nail think the, the, fr the fruit's perfect. Yeah, did not, we nail the wheat? Did we nail the hops? Did we nail the yeah. fruit? I think I think everything. I think everything's a home run. I think the fruit. I, I think the amount using, you, you yeah. added. Can we get I, you open that spaghetti western? Okay, yeah. For I sure. think using that star fruit is a great fruit choice too, because a star fruit. I mean, you've used them now a handful of times. They're not an overly juicy fruit. Yeah. So you're not adding a bunch of, not you know like. Not saying you're not watering it down, yep. but you're not juicing it down either. It's right. not like it's not putting its own juices and diluting your beer and replacing it with flavor. You know where I got the idea it's with Funky great. Buddha? They're they're a Floridian. They had a star fruit version when I visited down there, and I was like literally throwing my wallet at them. I'm like, here, more, yeah. more. And I talked with them, and they kind of gave me a little bit of the idea, <clears> kind of <throat> what they did with it. And ever since then, I've been trying to use it. I was about to give up on star fruit until this one because I've used it a couple times oh, and like. It it's comes good. through, but I just it couldn't. doesn't impart a ton of flavor. Yeah, right. And it's now, expensive, so fruit. I think fruit's perfect. The Drillo came out perfect. You know, if I were a nitpick, I think more is Zaka, but yeah. I mean that's that's it, not gonna take yeah. anything if away I, from me for the. If beer. I were gonna give it a, the one knock, and and it sounds such an American thing, but maybe a tiny bit more of a hot presence would have been. Would have been yeah. enjoyable, and but we, for an American wheat, you don't want you, it. You we played it safe. So, we went, we yeah. went, we went safe. middle of the road. To IBU should have been anywhere between 15 and 30. We went 22. I mean, right in the middle. Nailed it. So, right. so Jeff, if you were to give this a grade on this public school system scale <laughs> out of 100, what would you give the Deland 2016? Wait, now we're doing one. Now we're doing one to 100. We're not doing one to 10 anymore. Oh, one, one to ten. To one to ten. Yeah. It's sorry. the same thing. You just it's move a decimal point. Yeah, you I'm do sorry. one to ten. I'll do A through B. You do stars. No, no. <laughs> no we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give this 2016 Deland. I'm gonna give this an star fruit uh, eight point five. I take 5. it. Yes. Okay. I think it is. I think it is a better, a much better than average offering of a, a stylistically. It nail. It nails it. It's got all the flavors that you wanted to have in it. The body's there. Uh, it was a little light on carbonation, but not terribly light on I'd carbonation. Agree. I'd agree. Um, but it, the, everything was there for it, and I, I, I think tell it, you it did why, nail it. Why that was is because the volumes are so different for me. Usually I carbonate at five gallons, yeah. and I wasn't quite sure the measurements on this one and where they were. So I, again, I played it safe. I didn't want to overcarb it. I didn't want to undercarb it. So yeah. I, I well, the, the, one, the one that we had, your, your, was it the, the, the double? double? Yeah, that was. That thing carbonated for that days. That fucking went everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it pooped. But no, I think, I think that was a, a solid 8.5. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. If, if, now let's go on the scale of. This is a home brewer who isn't a professional. Is only on his fifteenth beer. Go. No, I'm like, 
No, that's I mean eleven. That's, eleven out of ten. That's I mean, you. Like I said, if I went to a bar and I wanted to order a star fruit wheat, and this came can looked nice, whatever, poured it in a glass and drank it. This nailed the style, and it's perfect. I would be happy with this beer, so there's nothing wrong with it. And that's where I was saying, the Stilt House, when I went in there, that Hefeweizen, I'm like, I'm pretty fucking sure I could today brew a better one than you're brewing on your system and selling to these people. Yeah. I mean, uh, American Weed's probably my favorite style front to back. Um, I would give this a little bit higher. I'd probably go an 8.7. Nice. Um, It's not that fake fake shit you don't taste you taste right you can tell it's a quality product you can tell it what they didn't the brewer didn't cut corners um star fruit's good i never had it and it was pretty good well, i like the peppery aspect almost like a rye like yeah. a, add like a it's rye just look. enough i wouldn't want yeah. any more than was there but yeah and at 5.4 percent, i think it's sessionable uh refreshing i mean i would yeah I, eight seven for sure I, I another home run if I had to judge it, I think I'd go four two five on my scale, zero to five. Yeah. Um, with three being like on point. Um, don't mean to toot my own horn or anything. But um, my my complaints about it, as you said, I'd like a little more carbonation. I like I agree. I think a little more Azaka would make it pop a little more. Um, and I would like it to be a little more weedy. I think if I brewed this batch again, I would up the wheat and lower the two row a little bit. Okay. I want a little more weediness in the wheat. We played it safe again, 50-50. 50% fifty fifty. We did. We played it safe. Yeah. Two row. Well, so. I love I love that it's a Florida. It's a Florida-inspired, with yeah. star fruit, it's a Florida-inspired wheat beer, which instantly could be the most citrusy thing ever made. You know, like, that's <laughs> yeah. just the way a lot of Florida-inspired, tropical-inspired yeah. wheat yeah. beers are. Everything has orange, 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 lemon occasionally, some yeah. citrus fruit in it. And, like, star fruit is, I believe, a citrus fruit It's in this, It's got to be citrus. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it tastes citrusy. It tastes yeah. almost like, I think it's somewhere it's between same, like, orange acidic. and yeah. a lemon. It's like a little bit bitter sweetness to it. But, it does, yeah. It's got a little, um, bit, a little bit of everything. But it is, uh, it, it's not overly citrus, which Car- I love. Carabucha or Carabola? I can't remember what it's, it's Which I, hope, name I is, yeah. hope you used citrus fruits, because now I just said it, well, and I just shot we'll you. We'll make the We're going to Mike's first ever homebrew. Woo! Yeah, so I mean. 2016 it might, The Land. It might just sit festival. back and passively watch. I mean, I made him pretty much do the entire brew. Good. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of the cleaning, a lot of the. That, that comes with the territory. You put me to work, brew, and. Yeah. and you I'm not. I'm be. not a lazy son of a bitch. So I, earn I, your dues. I earned my dues, and I learned a lot from it in terms of knowing how to brew beer. From and I a do smaller want to touch on that point when we're done with this. If we absolutely. have time, I'm not oh. sure if this is going to be a three this three hour be, episode or I'll, I'll I'll a three part. We've done like a billion. Like we've done, we've like done a an infinite episode. episode, episode this is, a, this time, is a big episode for us, so okay. I'll break it up. Well, I'm a big guest. So this this one, Jeff. I don't know. Did I tell you what I added? You did not, and I don't. I mean, you can tell me now. So the same base beer again. Same base beer. The same, but he boiled it separately. I used a Zaka. Okay. Which is the tropical notes, and then I use peco, which is more like a mint. Okay. Mint. And mango I, and mint. Mango and mint. And the fruit Good. I use is passion fruit and mango. Okay, so not overly citrusy. I like it. So, oh God, I'm fucking getting goosebumps, man. So, again, here we go. Moment of silence. Please let it be carved. Please let it be carved. Here we go. All right. We same, got carbonation. same carbonation. So, All right. Yeah. Should be the same level. I, I did them exactly the same. Now, mine's, there, there might be a slight color difference. Because when we ran the ward off, I do have to warn you, I'm not a huge mango fan. I don't care. But I, you know, I, I'll be true you'll to be, style. Be, yeah, I'll be honest. So mine's is gonna be lighter because when we ran the ward off, I got we didn't break it up evenly. So mine's gonna be slightly lighter than his. Yeah, which I can tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and, and you have a. I, well, mine had a tiny no, bit I more like carbonation. I want to like tiny bit more, but yeah, not. I got the bottom of mine again, so I got a little more, a little more cloudy. I just want to like frame it and just never drink it. Just look at it forever. So appearance, I mean, I think appearance, we're, we're it's, right it's the more yellow, level. a little yeah. bit more yellow, cloudy, so it's going to meet style. Uh, white ring around the head from the foam. Mm-hmm. God, Jeff, stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so I, appearance, it's, 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 it's power. Powerful it's, power. Yeah. So I haven't smelled it yet. So appearance <laughs> is spot on. You Correct. haven't tried this beer yet? No. no this is the first you haven't time tried your own beer? No. I, I love it. Yeah. I pull, you know how I work. I, won't, is, I don't want to drink it. This was the plan all along. I waited. That's why I came up early. I wanted to share these with you guys. and Yeah. Well, much appreciated. Yeah, so, man. style around the table, meat style. I think so. Look, in appearance. Good. Yeah. 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 It, it nails it. Again, right. a little bit low on carbonation, but nothing to be alarmed yeah. about. Ooh, Let's I get a tiny bit of sediment in mine. Yay. <laughs> oh, man. You. The nose Smell? is powerful. It's peachy. That is a power nose on this. I'm going to fuck around. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, I, when I... I've, I've been giving you kind of the updates as I bottle it. I've been smelling it, and yeah. it's definitely more mangoey smelling now than it was. 
Really? Okay. It, I got a lot more smelling of like the passion fruit before, more of the yeah. bitter kind of passion fruit than I did. But now I'm definitely getting a big hit of mango. I'm getting tropical notes like yeah. uh, through and through. Big, big tropical. Big. Yeah. It smells juicy. Like yeah. mango yes. juice. It yes. smells like I'm about to eat a mango. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Is that a good thing? Yeah. My mouth's watering. Well, that's what, okay. I mean, that's what you right. wanted, right. right? Cheers, fellas. Cheers, fellas. Oh, my God. Go, Here Mike. we go. Your very first. That's Brewers in 10, right? Look at I'm that smile. I'm waiting. Look at that smile on this guy. I'm absolutely waiting for Mike to take the first giddy, yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm getting you, goosebumps you, right now. Are you your hardest critic? Like Preston's no, this hard is on fucking himself. Ami- no, <laughs> I, I can care less. This is a this is I mean, eleven. I, it, it matters to me, but I'm not as critical because I'm not a brewer. Whoa, it's fucking juicy. That's juicy. So that's the yeah, the fruit. Wow. The- taste taste is more passion fruit than mango. Yeah, and definitely. nose is more mango than passion fruit in my right. opinion. Yeah, and that's right. the way I remember tasting it was a lot more passion fruit, but I also got more on the nose. But now it seems to have reversed with some time. Wow, it's whoa. Dude, that finish is great. Oh, God. I'll say the mouthfeel, I know you use the same base beer, but the mouthfeel is fuller on Preston's. Fuller. Really? I think. I, I, I would say it's the opposite. I think they taste the same. So. Well, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Look at us. We're, yeah, we're, we're all split. Yeah, split I think, oh, so man. I think the upfront, I'll say this is more complex. Okay. More complex. Because up front, it's a wheat. Then you get mango. Then you get a passion finish fruit, of passion yeah. fruit. That's solid, really solid passion it really fruit does. finish. Yeah. Like, like you get all three stages. And exactly. then the, no- and the nose. I think the nose tricks you into tasting more mango up front. Yeah. And then as you taste it, the mango disappears a little, and the passion fruit comes through really strong. I really in the like. End. Yeah, you're right. I really like how when you taste it, it's refreshing. Obviously, it's American wheat, but the the mango like kind of bitters your tongue a little bit. Yeah. And then the passion fruit kind of like smooths it over. It almost feels like the passion fruit is like a wave from the back of your throat yeah. to the front of well, your Well, passion fruit is yeah. very bitter. I mean, when I tried it when we were pouring it in, I was surprised how bitter it was. Because that looks like it'd be a nice, sweet, fruity, oh, you know, I think fruit, they're delicious. It's bitter. It's, they're a little bitter. Hey, cutie. You out of here? Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Try this are you getting any, uh, are you getting any mint no. character? No. I don't get much I'm not getting, I'm not mint. I'm not getting mint anywhere. Yeah. But I'm definitely getting, uh... So, the only thing, I don't think I get mint... I don't get any mint. But I get that. Maybe that a little bit of crisp, papaya. You know that like crisp, minty, kind of how it cuts the flavor? Yeah. I think I get that. Not necessarily that it's minty, but that that you're There's almost, not a whole lot of linger either. Almost tannic yeah. Yeah. in the fact that it cuts your flavor out yeah. and allows for the next flavor to come in. Because like, I almost think when you taste this, it, it goes in stages. And at each stage, there's a distinct cutoff of when you stop tasting what you were tasting before. And yeah. that's what's why I think it is a little more complex. It's very complex. Very complex. For, a first, I, maybe for you your a first beer, this first is un, beer. Un, un, freaking real. I, th- I think I get a little bit mint Here, uh, right stuff. in the front. Like the minute you, you taste tell, it, right in the front. Should we tell them what's in it or not tell no. them what's in it? Well, well, we'll, tell, we'll tell them. We'll tell, it's uh, mango and passion fruit. American wheat. Uh, Thomas. This is Thomas again. Remember Thomas? Thomas. My, that's my first homebrew ever. This is really good. You like it? That's good, yeah. Closer to the mic. Oh, am I on? You're yeah, on, you're, on. Yeah, you're, you're here, man. What's up? Ray yeah, Romano. How are you doing? Just getting <laughs> off work. Yeah. I, but I think I get a little bit of the, mid, in the, like the split second in the front before the mango kicks in. I'm awful yeah. when it comes to subtle stuff like that. So like my palate is just like. <laughs> Same thing. I'm like, yeah, guys. Totally sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> What is, oh, this is the one Boston brought. So okay. Good. Well, let's finish doing this, and then we'll okay. try it. I don't want to do a sour in the middle of tasting okay. your beer because our so, palates will be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add, Preston, before we go into the scores? No. I, I think um, I'm happy. You're happy? I'm very happy. Yeah, it's very fruity. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's so fruity. It's so fruity. <laughs> I love it. Totally. It's really good. I'm, I'm actually really happy with that this came out, how this came out. Uh, Jeff, if you give this a score... From one to ten with right. decimals, decimals. I am going to give this Preston. Don't kill me. I'm going to give this an eight point seven. Son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> only, only. Son so I think bitch. as I think as a consistent, repeatable beer and something that would be a core line. I think yours would win out. But the complexity of of Mike's is is pretty stellar for what it is. For an American wheat to have that kind of complexity is tough. Yeah. Um, and the, I'm not even a mango person, but you don't get a ton of mango. It's not overwhelming. Yeah, none of it was overwhelming. Right. It was all in balance. And I, I, my complaint against it would be a little bit of a mouthfeel thing, just not being a full as full-bodied. But then again, you thought it was more full-bodied. More, yeah. 
and uh, it's an American wheat, so I'm not expecting a barley wine. So um, that was the only knock on it, and I think it was. Uh, I think it's great, really well balanced, and it came through. I, I don't know that those flavors are repeatable in that kind of balance, but right. Oh, right. I think so. I think I think this beer is totally repeatable in the, the brew world. Um, I mean, we took the base is like easy. pretty good calculation. Yeah, of what and, came and, out, and what know. we used for the. Uh, I know, but we're in the middle of tasting. What we animal. use for the fruit. <laughs> Fucking Boston. Fucking Boston, man. <laughs> Him is penis. The interrupter. All I want to say right now is. Something about dicks. Jeff loves penis. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Look at him. Everybody's laughing except for Jeff because he knows it's true. <laughs> look at his face. These it, microphones look like dicks. <laughs> and that's why he's all over it right now. You guys you see him looking at Oh. <laughs> That was the one and only David Boston yeah. again. Damn, totally the guy who calls his wife fat, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, totally repeatable, I'm though. Just kidding, what, David. How we did the fruits and the additions. Like, I think I could brew this beer again, and it would be maybe not perfect again because my systems are a little new, and I'm still figuring out all the small little intricacies, but it would be damn close. Now, on the new system, what beers? Was this the first time with the new system or the second time? This was the first time with the, um, the entire cooldown system I had, okay. I believe. So oh. when you when you say new system, I, I, I'm relatively familiar with home brewing, yeah. but not I've never actually brewed a beer. But I know that for the most part, you start with a base system and you kind of just as you build, you build yeah. new parts into it. Well, what, right? what, so what have you upgraded the whole system or just essentially? Different? Essentially, yes. Yeah. So what you have to calculate when you're doing your brew is pretty much like the size of your kettle and how much uh, you boil off in an hour. Right. So my kettle was larger, so the boil off rates are different. Of course. And yeah. over time, you, I adjust my numbers. Like, hey, I actually boiled off a little less than I calculated. So over like three or four brews, you kind of dial it in. Well, well, I thought it was one, two. It's actually one, four. Well, one, four still was a little low, so we do one, five. And so you start dialing that in. So the kettle, additionally, the, the mash ton where you ho uh, house the grains and soak for the mash, I had a different mash ton, so it was like more like this style here of a cooler, a square cooler, whereas before I used the igloo kind of construction yeah. site water cooler. So just the dead space amounts in there, how long it takes to run off, how long it takes to and like... And you have to constantly keep that turning too, correct? Yeah, so I'm basically, I have to, well, you have to keep it turning, I'm sorry, um, but it's it just like the boil off, it kind of like, it takes three, four, five brews to dial in like, well, my dead space was 0. .6, but really I still collected 0. .4 more than I should have, so adjusting the numbers up and down and... Those numbers affect like the gravity levels of kind of what's going into the beer and how much it boils off and how much you get. So kind of you're you're condensing it down a little more, so you're getting less volume, but it's sweeter versus it's a little more watered yeah. down. So, okay. um, you know, once I get that nailed in, like my old system, I have it nailed in. Like I can I can reproduce a beer pretty much the same way every time if I use the same malts, the same poundage, and everything. Anyways, I digress. So Preston, yes sir, you really give this a scale. From one to your scale, one to five mm -hmm. on on my homebrew, as objective as possible. Yeah, because I know we have a competition going on. Kind of. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I already got one. I brewed both Jeff. beers. You know, we we both brewed both beers. You know, we um, I would say for me, this one would be a four out of five. And, and out of personal preference, I think what I would do or what I like or, or would need different. That's good. Is that again a little more carbonated? Um, I think I would like a little more mango and a little less passion fruit. I think it's a little – the passion fruit adds a little too much of the bitter. Okay. Um, you know, I'd like it just a, a, a touch more sour, sweeter the for the for the mango part of it. Um, other than that, though, fantastic. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Again, I'm not ashamed to be showing this off this weekend. I mean, that's, that's the risk, right? We came in here not even tasting this beer, and two days later we're serving it. So, yeah. I mean, that, that that's the confidence I had in what we had. American wheat's pretty straightforward. Again, 50% wheat. 50% zero, add a little more something for some sweetness, and then, you know, some hops. So, really, it wasn't like we were going, you know, crazy. We're using pecans and a stout with three vanilla beans that have been aged. Right, and, you not know, yet. Pretty, pretty straightforward. But, Mike, Tom, what about you? Coming up next. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, I'm trying not to be biased, but um, I like it. It's it's My my version is a lot of, of fruit, a lot of flavor, like, coming in your face. Right, oh, Thomas. all over it. Yeah, I know. I would give it my tongue too. Uh, it's a ten. It's, a, <laughs> it's not a ten. I would say an eight point nine. A little, uh, slightly better than than um, Preston's, just because of the complexity. That's the, what. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why it I'm definitely giving has it. more complexity. For if, sure. If if it didn't have the complexity, I would honestly think our beers would be even. 
but because mine yes. just happened to be com- more a little bit more complex in terms of flavoring, I think it deserves the yeah. extra point, I, two points. Like I, like I said, like I think the flavor on both was great. I oh, would great, actually yeah. even give the nose. Something. Uh, I would actually give the nose uh, an advantage, Preston. I think the nose of the star fruit was okay. subtle I agree with that. and but subtle but great. Like right. it, it hit. Right. Uh, and I think the mango nose was uh, slightly deceiving in yours because it right. wasn't fully mango flavored. But I think the mango nose tricked your taste buds into thinking you're tasting a lot of mango up front. And then when that falls off and the way it cuts with that slight what we don't know if it's mintiness or just the fact that it cuts off and then the passion fruit rolls and then the passion fruit finishes the fact that it was just a little bit more complex out of a wheat is is pretty incredible so that's why i gave it a bump in in score right otherwise yeah as far as enjoyability on both beers i think they're equal identical i agree with that but just the fact that one was a little more complex gives it a slight edge to me thomas what'd you think of my only you you only had mine but i still want to know what you think I'm just going to split your guys' difference you, and go with an 8.8. 8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the average. Okay. No, I thought it was really good. No, yeah. My compliments to you and my hat's off to you for that. It's your first time homebrew. Yep. It's pretty good, man. I'm not going to lie. So thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, it's yeah. better than some beers I've had from actual professional breweries. Yeah. So, you know. Well, that's what we talked about yeah. is I think I think when you drink these, you have to separate the fact that it's a homebrew and, and say, is this professional quality? And it, they both are. Yeah. 100%. Great. Awesome. You happy, Preston? I'm real happy. I've, I've given, I've given, given I'm always nervous, you know? not to a ton of people. Yeah. It's it's the first, you know, American wheat I've brewed. I've brewed a lot of German wheats, which I have in the cooler if we'd like to try at some point. Um, I'm yeah, I'm super for, happy. I'm down for whatever. I mean, again. Su- <laughs> Hashtag up for whatever. <laughs> down whatever. For, I'm down for whatever. Dirty right, Mike and the boys. <laughs> Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> so, any, 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 uh, I guess we can wrap it up here. Jeff, any, any plugs? Plug it anywhere. Oh, we want to plug doing, it somewhere. Are we not oh, doing we, weird beers? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. We have one weird too. I'm going to cut beer. it out. Cut. Okay. So next up. <laughs> we need more glasses. So yeah, we need, we need glasses. Wait, wait, wait. What? Are we cutting or are we doing another episode? No, we're no. One episode. This is one recording, but two episodes. When did, when did we start the second episode? We didn't. We never introed it. Right. We can do it right now. I'll, I'll, I'll intro it. It's not a big deal. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, are we doing the weird beer as part of the last episode or the new episode? Last episode. Listen, let Mike handle that. That's details. Yeah. All right, just go. You just then. show up, sit, look pretty. Just drink go, some man. Air. Yeah. Damn. Well, I'll, I'll intro it when we get new glasses. On it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, man. It's my job. Let's get this fucking spaghetti. So beer. spaghetti beer. We gotta get Goose back on this, right? Yeah. Uh, well, he we'll, said we'll, he wants to. We'll pour him some. We'll, we'll do we try really it. care? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, his, his like, better is here now. You know, would I rather have five ounces instead of three? Yes. Yeah. But. So I, I would assume, Jeff, this is our first, like, real, real weird beer. This is our first actually like, super obscure super beer. Obscure, yeah. yeah. So being being a super fan, I am. You know, I, I know I hear the you guys talk about fan. the number one and only super fan. I won't say uh, only, but. Well, I'm the only super fan. I'm the, first, I'm the only number one. Yeah, you're that's what the I'm first saying. There's no, there's no two number ones. You're, you're, you are number one. There can I'm number only be you're one. one. There can yeah. only be number one. Yeah, unless uh, you have eleven. I don't know. The I, dude from North Carolina that wants us to talk about not beer, he might be our super fan. Wait, so what, NA beer? No. I have his question, his follow up question, but uh, we'll, we'll save ooh, it. We'll ooh. save it. I know you guys talk about always wanting weird beers, so I I sought out something. I think I found something that is categorized as weird. Oh yeah. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> we have Spaghetti Western. Spaghetti Western by Prairie Artisan Ales. No, well, it's a, a collaboration collab. between I'm sorry. Prairie and, uh, and Brewfist. Yeah, Brewfist. Sounds it good. is an Imperial Spaghetti Western with coffee, chocolate, and spaghetti. So, yeah, it's, it's cocoa nibs, cocoa coffee, nibs, coffee, coffee, and spaghetti. Spaghetti. But what kind of spaghetti? Is it angel hair spaghetti? Well, that's or? A, well that's spaghetti, a spaghetti is a style of macro? pasta. So that's angel true, hair true, yeah. is different than spaghetti. It would have said angel hair. Oh, so it's like but regular we don't, spaghetti. What I don't know is, is it spaghetti after it's got the sauce? <laughs> you know? The spicy Was there sauce ball? added? <laughs> is, there, is there some tomato sauce? Hey, some tomato sauce. Hey, how many am I pouring? Uh, uh, I guess we got to give Goose one. Give Goose one and give, give Boston. Give Goose a tiny one. Give, oh, give, give Boston, Boston one. Six. We'll give Boston Do, one. Do, uh, yeah, six. But keep, I'll go run keep, it to keep the extra over. for you. And oh, of course. I mean, that's. Mm. Yeah. Goes without saying. I'm not Yo, trying to give hey, Boston hey, a bunch uh, of this. Uh, Thomas, you, know? you should make that in the beer cheese. Yeah, I wish, dude. <laughs> How well, funny would that be? We, so, uh, <laughs> we always uh, use a porter in the French Thank onion, you. and since we had um, Nibs Muggler on the other day, I put that instead. Porter jelly. We got porter jelly now. Oh, shit, yeah. 
Hey, can you go give this to Goose yeah, yeah, and give that to Boston? Yeah. And then come back? So. Okay, that's you. All right, whatever. We got a little spaghetti western, hey. Hey, it's a spaghetti western. I wish I can, we could play music, but. How do you do, what's an Italian western accent? How do you do an Italian <laughs> cowboy? <laughs> hey, it's me, ma'am. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> are, you, are you going to shoot the dogs on the prairie? So while Thomas is passing the spaghetti out, spaghetti western. It smells super coffee. Does it? I should I have, have looked first. They I know. Just added, I added like, a little bit of spaghetti. Just I think they say. used. I think they probably brewed it with like dry spaghetti. Yeah, that would be my guess. Is in the mash time with the grains, shit. they that just put spaghetti grains in there. Thomas is back in. Hey, that's not a lie though. Hey, so color, color is it's Coffee. black. Dark. Black <laughs> is midnight. Black is midnight. If it was a little bit lighter out here, I'd maybe like dive into yeah. actual appearance because I like stouts like <laughs> hey, that. Shine a light through it, man. But so, can but, you see through it or not? I mean, whoa! No, it actually. It's it's. Oh, it's, it's actually a super dark brown. Yeah, yeah brown. it's really motor oily. Yeah. Old um, so, Imperial was it a stout? What Imperial was? stout. Imperial stout. So color, color is, is really there. dark, even for an Imperial stout. Eight point seven percent. Eight point seven. The uh, Imperial. The I've, slight head that I got on it was almost a copper brown. Yeah. Not. It's actually a nice color. Oh, yeah. We're about to get some rain. Here comes so. the rain. So we I can would, put I this would, down all the way now. The It'll protect us coming? a little bit. I would assume. So I would say color. Uh, is is of style? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, so, what do you think? Preston color is? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's a little light. You know, when you think imperial style, you're gonna think big, big, rosy, dark. Okay. It's a little light, but I mean, it's not off-putting. It's not okay. like, wow, this is a stout. I wouldn't believe it. Uh huh. So. It's starting to rain. Thomas, what do you think of color? It's gonna downpour, dude. Um, mm. color very dark. Like I said, it looks delicious. I'm past the color. I want to get to the taste. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> fellas, if you want to. We're preparing for rain. Yeah, the rain. Dude, we're preparing for Do you see this shit? Yeah, it's about the hellstorm. Yeah, <laughs> this is more than rain. This is like a fucking big old oh Arctic God. band. The apocalypse. This thing up on a beach towel. Wait, hey, let's. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, hopefully it, right. rains, it rains more now. Okay. All right, we're hunkering down. Okay, so. Uh, all right, fellas. Cheers to the Did Imperial you recording again? Did you stop it before? No, I've, been, I've been recording this whole time. Yeah. I'm looking at it. It's moving. All right, you're good. My bad. It's your show. So I was second out. Cheers to the Imperial Spaghetti Western. Please, cheers God, have some. Please have some sauce. Weird, <laughs> <laughs> weird beer. What's a spicy meatball? Let down. <laughs> I don't really taste spaghetti. Yeah, Am it's an one? Imperial coffee stout. Yeah, yeah. The Imperial yeah. coffee stout with a little bit of chocolate. Like, oh, it's not a bad beer. Oh no, no it's no, not a bad no. beer whatsoever. Just really let down that it doesn't taste like spaghetti. So for yeah. that. I'm knocking it stylistically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on the bottle. It better be there. That's yeah, what Nate always there. says, you know. If you're going to put it on the bottle. So it's a uh, chocolate western, not a spaghetti western? Yeah. Yeah. So the style, it tastes really good. Yes. It, it does, stuff. yeah. I can I'm, taste just, I'm really I can upset taste Prairie would throw their name on this. Who Prairie knows? does, like, if they're putting something out, they usually make sure it's right. Yeah. I don't know. And 10 bucks a bottle. <laughs> right, but yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, well, most of their stuff sour related, and sours are always expensive, but. But regardless of the spaghetti, it's still a really good. It's a great beer. Great beer. Nothing it's wrong um, with it. It's just I not can taste spaghetti. Like the, the, like the powdered chocolate. I was going to say, chips. it's a little kind of that, that powdery, yeah. which I don't typically like. It's a little too chalky. Yeah. Like, that well, that's, I feel like a lot of cocoa nib beers are like that. Uh, yeah. See, I love that. Mm-hmm. Oh well, yeah, so I know Nib Smuggler. Smuggler's my favorite, so yeah, of course I love I mean, it. Yeah, that's I'm a nice, smooth, like, yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take a take the word spaghetti off the <clears throat> bottle. This beer is a hundred percent quality. Yeah, not a, no, it doesn't score a hundred percent, but it's a qual- I'm quality. I'm saying it's yeah. a quality offering. Yeah. Um, the fact that I was really let down by the fact that it doesn't taste like spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> well, never said meatballs. It just says spaghetti. That's, that's true. It has to have the sauce. Hey, a boy can dream. <laughs> so, I like it. For what I like, it. at least throw some tomatoes in it or something. <laughs> oh God, no! Please, no. Give it. Imagine you can imagine it could come out right. That could come out good. Yeah. Just throw some ragu in it. Throw some freaking basil in there. So for the first offering of our truly, by definition, weird beer, Thomas, one to ten. Uh, well, because they don't really taste any spaghetti. I'm We're gonna, gonna do two scores. Okay. Well, with right. spaghetti uh, and without spaghetti. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Which one do you want first? Whichever uh, do, you uh, choose. Do without, right. Oh, no, yeah, let's do, do it the do same. Without spaghetti. Without spaghetti? I'd give it like a seven, a seven and a half. A seven or a 7.5? Because you got 7.75. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7.2. 
Seven point five, and that's judging it based on it being no an imperial Correct. chocolate stout. Yeah, seven point five. Got okay. it. Okay, now with spaghetti. I'm gonna give it a one because there's no spaghetti. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> what is you that? Smart motherfucker. <laughs> you just you just ruined the podcast. Budweiser <laughs> is a more spaghetti taste and beer than this. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually probably true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeff, without spaghetti. Without spaghetti as an imperial chocolate stout, I'm gonna give it a uh, eight two. With spaghetti. A six. <laughs> you just <laughs> made a number up. I did. I made up a number. <laughs> because, because it's still a great, it's still a great really tasting good. beer. Yeah, just, yeah. So I'm if not going to say it there's one. spaghetti in it. I need to taste I mean, the spaghetti. In, in, for brewers in 10 of it, having spaghetti, zero. I mean, okay. I, but no, as far as giving it a rating, I'll give it a six if you're expecting spaghetti. And I'm, I'll give it a, okay. I'll give it an eight, two. Otherwise, okay. Preston without spaghetti. Without spaghetti, a six five. To me, it's a little too chalky. It's a little too. It's got like a syrupiness to it. Okay. It's a little kind of this, this thick kind of syrupy. Not not a fan of. Uh-huh. It, it's a, it's in style. A little bit above, you know, some others, but. Nah. With spaghetti. This is a ridiculous question because there's no spaghetti in it. But if I did knock it for points on what's on the label, then I would have to go somewhere around a five. Okay. A, a, two, a two point five or you know I times two to five. A <laughs> yeah, like, one. one. Hey, well, you know, if it starts spaghetti, I better taste the yeah. damn spaghetti. Okay, so without spaghetti. What's going on? So uh, without spaghetti, I would probably go around Jeff, uh, probably an 8.3. I kind of like the chocolate into it. I like the coffee. I like how it kind of like blends together. Not complex, but it's still, and it's. I would say it's a B, above average, so a B level beer. Yeah, the coffee level's nice. I, I, um, that's something I failed to mention. I do like the, yeah. the level of coffee that's in there. So. Yeah, I would give it a B minus. I mean, it's not gonna blow you away, but if I saw it again, I'd be like, "Ain't no fucking spaghetti in it," but I'd, I'd get it, right? <laughs> With spaghetti, non acapulco. I can't even say it. <laughs> Na <laughs> non acapulco, because there's no fucking spaghetti in it. So if you're buying this beer for the sole reason of expecting spaghetti, you're gonna be fucking let down. What if you put it in your spaghetti sauce, then the spaghetti no, really no comes spaghetti, out, dude. So I would go with Thomas. Give it. A, <laughs> I would not even grade it. Give it a rating because there's no fucking spaghetti. Yeah, in it. I think I think that like you said, the chocolatey chalkiness to it would have been I a like knock, it. except that the high ABV rounded out the sweetness at the end, yeah. so it kind of made it. So I'm a it made bit, it nice. I get, I'm a little bit above. It you. reminds me a lot of Eight southern, of a lot of the southern tier stuff. To be honest with you, fuck southern tier. It does. It reminds me of southern tier stuff. Super nosy, really big flavor, almost injected. Well, yeah. a lot of injected. Well, southern almost, tier. Yeah. Definitely injected, injected. Yeah. <laughs> but it but it still tastes good. So I can't knock them for it. I'm not a huge fan of adjuncting beers, but it is. It does taste good for a month or two. Yeah. So eight point three for me without spaghetti with spaghetti. Fuck off. That's my rating. Damn, I didn't know I could do Ooh, that. Ooh, fuck it. <laughs> we could give it. We could give it a little like. Yeah. F with some exclamation yeah, marks yeah. next to it. Fuck it. On, a, on a scale of one to ten, it's fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. No spaghetti. So we got any plugs, Thomas? Plugs? You can yeah, plug we're, we're about, it uh, anywhere. Plug it anywhere. What are you talking about? <laughs> you can, put, you can plug a Prius. You can plug. Yeah, let's give a shout out to, to Priuses. Oh, am I giving a? Oh, I'm the best gangbang car around. <laughs> it's super quiet. Any, anything going on in the kitchen? Yeah, got some new shit rolling out. We're gonna have a uh, bread we do pudding have coming out by we the do. time this comes out. Hopefully, yeah. some something tonight's gonna feature this. What I'm saying. We are. We're, we're gonna go, make a go little bit of something. something with that oh, tonight. Oh. Something. Watch with. your cup, fucker. Nah, I don't want it. Cheers. But we got some. Uh, we're gonna, gonna be rolling go out on Monday with a new menu. With uh, it, not think. a completely new menu. A couple new items. We're gonna have a uh, bread pudding on it. Uh, the brat sliders are now gonna actually be a brat worst, where we're gonna be adding sauerkraut to it and keeping it on a hoagie roll, so it'll be like a traditional brat worst. It's a yeah. lot better that way. I've had it so much better. Um, Tuscan hummus flatbread for all the vegans out there. Shout out to the vegans. Yeah, woo. We all know about you. I like bacon. <laughs> if and we didn't, we would know by the third second you were in the building. <laughs> the minute yeah. they in the building. <laughs> you were vegan. So. <laughs> So is that it? Just new, new um, kitchen things rolling out? Yeah, a couple of new things just rolling cool. out this Monday. Stay tuned. Yeah, there's going to be a new awesome. menu rollout. We're actually having all new menus, completely redoing yeah. the menus at a corporate level. So all the stores are going to have new menus. So everything so. we all learned in the kitchen school is just fucking out the no, window. Those oh, are the no, only, no, those are the God, only no. three only new like items. four new oh, items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But actual physical new menus are getting, uh, they're okay. nice. Yeah, they're really nice. Okay. Okay. new menu, I just I'm uh, probably would have quit two months ago. Okay. Like, I don't got time to be learning a new menu every three months. <laughs> a new menu. Hey, Jeff, it's your turn. Jump in the Prius, Jeff. Plug it anywhere. 
That's literally what happens in the Prius, I think. They just jump in and just go. They plug it anywhere after they jump in. What happens in the Prius stays in the Prius. Um, Delane Craft Beer Festival happened. Yes. It was great. These two gentlemen to my left did a fantastic job. Thank you, sir. It's happening in two days, but I'm sure that, you're, I'm sure that your beers are going to do very well. I got real confused, but I was going to go with it. But. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, we did really well. Awesome. I like to try to forecast like where this is going to get released and pretend that it, right. I'm giving a review of it. So I, like, gave I, up, I gave up on all that, yeah. but <laughs> I, I just do it for fun at this point because I know I sound ridiculous, but yeah. I do it. Like with Maple Bacon, I was like, I just went to Funky Buddha, <laughs> <I just went laughs> and to it Funky was Buddha. great. It was awesome. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I think that uh, I think it's gonna go really well. Obviously, we did the burger eating contest. I won, so it was awesome. Dude, it, it happens on Saturday, burgers. and I'm not in it. I'm not in it, but I'm just gonna pretend I won because this <laughs> oh, aired afterwards. So He's, he is Mr. Hollywood. But come out. Uh, we're doing the new menu rollout. We're gonna have a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe here. We have yes, a Ballast Point event uh, coming up in February 11th. February 11th. Maybe this will be out in time for I the balance. I don't know if I work event. here or not, so um, don't look at me. <laughs> we have Terrapin March 5th. It's going to be a huge Terrapin takeover. I think we're looking at 30-plus taps for but Terrapin. But Jeff won't be here, though, for that. I won't be here because I'm going to be <laughs> doing the Belgian event out in Melbourne. So you guys can see me there. It's going to be awesome at Coaster's Bar. Coaster's, yep. Bar and, and Grill or Pub and Grill. But, yeah, we'll be out at Coaster's doing the uh, doing the podcast out there. So it, it's going to be an awesome time. Yeah. Not to take people from either event whichever suits What's you vote? but come to come to either we're gonna have a great time you guys have a new happy hour menu right we do yeah I it's mean, essentially the only, same thing do i know this one item changing <laughs> yeah, one item, changes. One item okay. changing the tuscan hummus will be available for happy hour the okay. wings the will piece. not be okay. available anymore for happy hour uh but that's five dollars we have five dollar food on uh monday through friday three friday, to seven, three three to seven and then sunday through thursday uh, sorry i'm burping Sunday through Thursday, ten to close. We do uh, we do the happy hour and then the reverse happy hour at night. Okay. So reverse happy hour. What is that? That's just late night happy it's, hour. We just uh, call hour it happy. happy. It's where you're sad for an hour instead. Uh, I got you. Yeah, hour happy. It's it's uh, but we do the five dollar food items. We have some uh, four dollar beers available. Those nice. are changing as well. We're adding uh, terrapin hop executioner to that, which is a upgrade over our, our our IPAs. And then we're also adding. Um, Let's see. We have Cigar, uh, Cigar City Maduro going on. Oh yeah, as well. So four dollars. We got some good, some awesome. good quality beer for four bucks coming on at, at those times. So come out for a happy hour. It's gonna be awesome. And, and we're doing. I mean, we're doing good here. Everything's good. going well. The kitchen's going well. So good. If you didn't know we had food, come out and see us. The food's actually really freaking awesome. And as always, five dollar burger Mondays with this side of tots <laughs> or fries. <laughs> Rob will kill coleslaw. That's I'm gonna awesome. put my little image up on the YouTube video. Just to piss you off. Thank you. Preston, it's your sure. turn to get in the Prius. Plug I'm it in anywhere. the Prius. I'm, plug, I'm plugging it all over. This Every, is a new bit now. I think Toyota is definitely going to like sponsor us. <laughs> Every place is going to hey. be plugged. It's going to be plugged. Um, yeah, you know, just uh, uh, yeah, just come check out the Beer Chasers. You know, appreciate Mike Let me on the At The Bar Always, podcast. Man. My second appearance. Always. Ooh. Second. So we're, we're far behind. And, you know, I think you're like 35 of mine. I'm two on yours. Let's be honest. Mine's have been more fulfilling. Uh, let's see. We'll know about that. You went to Three Daughters and drank for free. Oh, that's fun. That's true. And What's wrong with that? The whole, nothing's wrong. That's what I'm oh, saying. Might <laughs> <as> well, <laughs> and then we're here at doing a, a, a I don't even know how long. World of Beer, like, which is a very beer fantastic. Beer uh, we've been up here a couple of times. We filmed up here for our uh, New Belgium release episode, probably episode four or five. I mean, way back Beer Chaser history. Yep. Um, always super cool staff up here. Super great beers. Food now from what I hear is excellent. Can't wait to try some of that tonight. But, yeah, just come check us out. Uh, the Beer Chasers are on YouTube, Facebook, The Beer Chasers. You'll find us 72 episodes strong. Still going. Trying to do it, but uh, love these guys. Had a great time. Always appreciate, appreciate the, uh, the it, support. Man. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome man. having you on. Yeah, so uh, uh, obviously we're at the bar podcast. I uh, just want to thank Preston for doing er- all the work he did today. This episode oh, yeah, c- could not have happened without hey. you. Well, literally, all, all the beers were yours, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, Share the wealth. On behalf of, of uh, I'm sure Jeff will agree, thank you for bringing – the homebrews, which yeah. were oh, awesome. Yeah. The, there's uh, more, there's the more to go. We, we can start another one if you want. But we'll <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming up, man. I'm excited to do the the Deland Craft Beer Festival yet again. Yeah, we'll be we'll be schwasty pants. Can't wait, man. Yeah, yeah, Shwasty for sure. Schwasty pants. I am uh, so, uh, I am wife and kid free this time. Love them both, but glad to have a little bit of, of me time. Go out there and have a good well, time. That's the not way have, to drink a lot of beer. Yeah, yeah. Not, not have to worry about getting home. It's and, getting fucking nuts. Yeah, so we're gonna. Right. 
I'm, I'm not going to pace gonna myself this time around. If you, <laughs> if you feel like you work up an appetite, come back and eat as many burgers as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have to see about we'll, that. We'll think about that. Left yeah, check us out on social media. I will post everything on the video for YouTube. But we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Stitcher, iTunes. Fucking Reddit. Ev- Reddit. We're fucking everywhere. Fucking whores, man. You're, fucking, out, yeah, you're man. out there. YouTube, yeah, everything. We need to be so, on Twitter. Uh, we are on Twitter. Spread Twitter. Spreading yeah. the social media legs wide open. At symbol the bar podcast because I'm super fucking witty like that. But yeah, check us out on social media. We're there. Come join in on the show before we start charging you. That's happening. <laughs> we're gonna start billing people because we're fancy like that, Thomas. I see. Anyway, we'll invoice you. Yeah. Thanks again for listening and watching. And until next time, have a fucking awesome week. Later's. Drink what beer. a sign off. I like that. That's got to be your new sign-off. Have a fucking awesome week. Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne is having a kick-ass Belgian event, Jeff. Ready. Matt. Excited. They're the oldest bar in Central Florida. And, and from what I hear, the, the birds have said that's the biggest Belgian event in, in the region, but maybe also in the state. It wouldn't, I wouldn't, that would not surprise me even a little so bit. What, so what's going to happen is March Thank you, 4th, 5th and 6th at Coaster's Pub and Grill in Melbourne. They're having a Belgian tap takeover. They're having Belgian chocolate and Belgian cheeses for everyone who wants to buy them and try them, can have them. Tickets are free, and we will definitely be there. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an awesome event. Oh, absolutely. And I heard, I mean, rare, rare Rare, Belgian, all limited release. And I know Not all, but mostly limited release. Some Belgians are really hard to get. Oh yeah, uh, you no. Know, some Bel- to get almost rare all Bel- Belgians are to get rare to get. Belgians is uh, is a, quite the feat. So definitely come out. Me and Jeff will be there, saying hi and everybody and mingling and getting drunk with you guys. Yeah, oh, well, it'll be easy to do at a Belgian event. So yeah, so come by Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne, March fourth, fifth, and sixth. We we will be there that Saturday. So I believe that is the fifth. Yeah, yeah, it's the I fifth. think so. It's the fifth. Yeah, so be there. Look for us. We'll be with Dave, the owner. Come say hi, and we'll. Uh, We'll have a good time.